So uh, Vikram, uh, I welcome you to my podcast. I would like to know from you that how did you started this uh, your journey in blockchain space, and how did you started doing this uh, startup in uh, now, which is sort of a very new uh, kind of uh, you know team these days. Not many people are uh, doing tooling for DAO, and it is like you to start with your journey in this space. How did you start in blockchain? When did you heard about blockchain, and how 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 was it so far? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hitesh, so first of all, thank you for having me here on this show. It is always nice talking to people who are trying to figure out stuff around Web three. And as far as my journey goes, right? Like, see, I have a product and design background, and it was a whole sequence of events that brought me to where I am today. So back all the way into twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen, I was in IIT mm-hmm. Guwahati. Okay. Uh, this thing called design, which was very open-ended back then, but the benefits of it were that you could pretty much try doing anything. You could go into a computer lab and say that, "Hey, I'm trying to figure out uh, gestures, like wireless gestures or like those motion sensing stuff," and you could tie that up as well as the product to your course, right? Like, so there was a lot of freedom. But I, I remember distinctly jumping into design and deciding that, okay, design is not my thing. Uh, maybe I'm gonna try coding, and I went into like I was ba- like highly fascinated by this thing called data visualization. Mm-hmm. There were all of these patterns of like if you, if you it's it's really fan- it fascinates me till date. Like if you go in and look at real time mapping of how flights are taking off in the air and like the ways in which you can mm-hmm. um, analyze and derive insights from those patterns of when the city is working, when other business hours, how's how's the GDP tied up. Mm. to the timing of the flights in the air and like the time of the day and so on it's it's all yeah. very interesting so yeah. i started pursuing data visualization and uh it's usually very tough to get an internship but because i was very persistent i think it it always ends up in good things so mm. i ended up getting a couple of offers one was a paid internship one was a very prestigious uh university out of belgium mm. and i wanted to like Go on and work with this professor for two two and a half months. This was 2015, right? Like, but the mm. backstory is that up until then, I was trying a whole bunch of things. Sometimes I was playing around with Oculus. Sometimes I was trying and doing something around in general VR that is not just Oculus driven. Sometimes like all of those leap um, devices that you had back then for mm. hand gestures and so on. And uh, I was all over the place in short, right? Like and. and Somehow or the other, I remember I even got like into the visa application and everything for Belgium. It was all uh, going to be sponsored. And then mm. very last minute, I ran into this Khan Academy uh, website, right? Like That's now it. Khan Academy had like, Khan Academy was always there. Of course, I, I was not someone who was checking it in and out. But there was this thing called Bitcoin, which was like flowing around here and there in conversations. Mm. It's like the future. Mm-hmm. And again, given that the mind space that I was in back then was more about, oh, anything that has to relate with the future, let's try it out. Right. I was like, whatever this Bitcoin thing is, let me check it out. Right. Like, mm-hmm. And I landed on to Khan Academy. Now, the story is I could have gone to Belgium. And the other way was like, I just stay back in India, mm-hmm. do a whole bunch of workshops that were being conducted. So MIT had a whole bunch of India initiatives back then. Mm-hmm. So there was MIT Design Innovation Program, MIT make in india mm. uh, initiative build with india so these researchers from harvard and mit would fly right. and they would like host these workshops so i was mm-hmm. like okay i'll stay back do this bitcoin thingy whatever it is mm. and uh, maybe it's a better exposure for me because i can do three things mm. uh, if i go to belgium that professor was anyway going to be away for four months four weeks right. so that leaves right. me just with one month right. of training with him and i decide to like not pursue it right like mm. and then Bitcoin started. I had a whole bunch of like three weeks because suddenly I was uh, in my summer vacation without mm. reading stuff. From there, there was no looking back. Once you know what Bitcoin is, you mm. start diving deeper into uh, how it works, why it was built. I think Litecoin was out there back then. Then Ethereum came the following yeah. year. And it, it's very easy to follow because honestly, everything back then was all about the same thing. Like it was more about we are ramping up scalability or we'll support this thing called smart contracts and so on. Mm. And I was very well aware of stuff. But then life happened. uh, 
college career happened and then i ended up joining a company that had nothing to do with crypto mm-hmm. however my understanding was decent enough so i remember like getting the first company that i joined right out of college was sprinkler it's a customer experience management platform mm-hmm. uh, we we were working with some of the best brands like you can think of l'oreal png nike prada mcdonalds a couple of these i have even met executives face to face over breakfast lunches or dinners and uh sprinkler at that point in time was more about my pursuit of understanding how products are built and how mm. design fits into all of it i joined sprinkler as a designer as a ux designer grew into a senior director over 4 years mm-hmm. that's a lot of jump in terms of promotions and a whole bunch of stuff was happening i got interested into product management at some point in time we were anyway working very closely with product managers even like um, to some extent i got into growth product growth mm-hmm. that also was very fascinating because growth is that whole idea of how you are mm-hmm. acquiring a user how you monetizing them what are the loops and the flows that are in there and so on yeah sprinkler was happening but on the other end like out of work the only thing that i was like continuously following was crypto now i'm going to say some things that i'm not very proud of but uh for example polygon came right like and mm-hmm. i i was very well aware of polygon coming mm-hmm. from india and i like ah oh, in an indian company i don't know how it's going to do in crypto because <laughs> just uh like back then the companies that we knew of were coinx yeah. and so on and they were going nowhere right like a couple right. of them even shut down and then there were these regulations ban you will go to a jail and whatever conversations was going on i remember in 2017 i was deeply invested so i like when i say deeply invested i never went to that situation where the water was over my head but i wanted to like give it an honest shot so i was like okay if this is really be- going to become what they say it's going to become hmm. and i agree because i have been following the technology i'm going to regret it if i do not go in hmm. so that is how i i started like putting in my first few salaries into crypto hmm. and this was all 2017 back then there was no regulation no clarity like, yeah. there was no discussion at all hmm. crypto kitties came in I remember sitting in the office and showing everyone around us oh, see mm. how fun this is you can breed you know like these cats and kittens I don't know whatever is happening in crypto mm. back then I didn't really understand how crypto kitties would get tied to NFTs mm. and at one point in time I remember I had over 100 of them should like if I would have kept them it would have changed my life forever I never perceived it we let go of it because it was like just a fun side engagement right like but anyway fast forward things happened uh Sprinkler was going to go for an IPO. They did an IPO mm. last year. And the S1 documentation and filing and everything was in process and at that point in time I realized that okay, my pursuits of growth uh business growth was not going to be possible at Sprinkler given that we were in that IPO stage so you do not really do a lot of experiments and I was it was even anyway 4 years for me so I was like okay, I'll step mm. out. Let's figure mm. out what next. Mm. And I sort of went on a one month uh day tour of india where i was just meeting every founder that i knew of and okay. back then it was a good list because you you get like you get to know a lot of people if you are doing good in the industry so there were a right. whole bunch of people who knew me and every breakfast lunch and dinners i was having with these different people honestly if you ask me and bluntly i have not put it publicly out ever before but mm. it was more on the lines of to me in my Okay, Sprinkler was very fast paced. We maybe built sixty plus products with a revenue of a million or more each. Mm. If you go through that journey in four years, of course you did a few things wrong, mm. but you also did a few things right. And was the perception in my head of what I understood about how product business and design works mm. the right perception, or was it just a bubble? That is what I was trying to validate, right? Like, mm. so I started talking to these people, saying, "Hey, what's up?" Mm-hmm. what are you building what have you learned if you are doing a startup how is that been some of my batchmates some established ceos and so on mm-hmm. i think i met some 60 70 people in a course of one month and in that process of course i got a whole bunch of job offers but mm-hmm. that was not the point right like that trip ended abruptly because my grandmom uh, mm-hmm. passed away and i mm-hmm. remember i was surfing and i i had to like suddenly so take a break and fly back home but mm-hmm. that was like i opening enough for me to understand what i really understood about the sector where i was as far as the world of business goes mm. and it was all a good state to be in i wanted i always knew i wanted to start something of my own but the only thing that my realization was like maybe i do not know uh how zero to one works right like because when i went into like around a billion 
it went to 5 billion 4 billion whatever it is today and mm. i was like okay that was still convenient like what would you do if you had to do things from scratch so i ended up joining merkel science now i joined merkel science because merkel science was in the crypto domain i was i joined in as a role of an avp of product and merkel science is crypto forensics and regulatory tech okay. mm. so crypto forensics is let's say you take money from someone in the form of crypto and you just run away mm. you scam someone Mm-hmm. you are tricked by someone at the end of the day you will go on and complain right. right like to to the authorities what are they going to do how are they going to trace funds mm-hmm. what happened and then there are these suspicious behaviors behaviors that tell me that okay maybe you are really trying to you know uh sort of launder money here right like mm-hmm. hitesh is a bad person hitesh is trying to uh buy drugs on dark web like so there are these behaviors that you can identify in flag and authorities like fbi Kraken, mm-hmm. Coinbase, Visa, Goldman, Mastercard. Anyone who's trying to deal with crypto, they have to ensure that they are not letting okay. or facilitating these things, right? Like, so it has to be done for every token. It's a tricky thing to do, and there's a lot of scope. Like, every business in the world is going to need crypto forensics sooner or later, as long as they are like producing their own so, token. So, how good is this forensic for crypto? Because I am very interested in this particular topic. Because I I come from a security background. I have done this uh, forensic. uh in early days of my career so in crypto like we have coin mixers right so many smart people they use coin mixers so so how these uh, things work uh, like i th- i believe if uh, somebody is serious uh, with this uh, money laundering if he is laundering a big amount of money he will always use coin mixer right so in that case how this forensic tools yeah no so that is very uh, interesting and see like for people who do not understand coin mixers it's like you put in one coin and you can take out the mm-hmm. same a uh, token or you can like swap it with another token like you can do a whole bunch of things there is a jumbling that happens and it's very tl- tough to mm. keep a track of what went in and what went out but there are see that is where there are serious efforts being made to understand for example let's say at one point in time someone put in one bitcoin mm. and they took in an equivalent amount of eth out or an equivalent amount of bitcoin out right mm. like and that transaction happened over a period of uh in 30 seconds or it in one minute right like mm. it's highly likely that it was the same person so it becomes all about probability mm. and you will have to deduce stuff out because it's it's a very much an analysis of behavior so you have to do these analysis and okay where is the ip coming in from okay. uh is that ip bouncing between a lot of locations how is that wallet what are the sources of funds that that has interacted with in the past is that a new wallet that has popped up mm. right? right like was it that 100 bitcoin was divided into 0.1 into thousand places and now it's again being like laundered because the criminals are very smart mm. if if someone is like lagging a wallet they know that the best thing to do is like go launch a new wallet but now mm. with, with all of the regulations like travel rule and mm. so on that have come into crypto mm. and it is so important we talk about it because honestly somehow government or like the industry has painted this picture of oh my god bitcoin that is like a crime yeah. right like you're laundering money criminals are using it drugs and what not it is true you can use it but honestly you you do that using fiat as well yeah, like no yeah. one really talks about it you have just yeah, accepted yeah. it yeah yeah so so the thing is like there like the discussion should more be on how to fix it the right. challenge is there is so much of innovation happening in crypto that every day something new or the other is coming up and even if every exchange in the world starts doing kyc hmm. and you know like it sort of is nothing that the decentralized community will ever accept because again people prefer being anonymous and they don't want their details to go out but let's say Mm. let's say we make it mandatory that okay your details will only be existing with the centralized players you can do whatever you want with cryptocurrency for the sake of technology mm. uh essentially what's going to happen is that there will be a new token that gets launched and that token doesn't have a support mm. right so like we should have also innovations or like ideas around how a new token is introduced so that someone who's like understands now that bitcoin or ethereum is not that easy to transact and doesn't go to this random token called alpha coin and then mm. they are just like maybe mm. using that to launder money right like yeah. so it's 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 a tricky spot to be in i think but there is a serious amount of innovation happening and it is reliable there are people i distinctly quote this time and again there was the story of a lady from italy she was 45 years old she's talking to this nigerian guy mm. uh now this guy comes on a virtual date with her every mm. day for 9 months 9 and a half months mm. that means you develop a bonding right like if you you also start talking to someone for 9 months you'll be mm-hmm. like okay this person is legit mm-hmm. now they decide on getting married this mm-hmm. guy is from nigeria he says my currency is devalued i need to fly to mm-hmm. like it's anyway a bad place to be in let me fly back to europe he's like mm-hmm. she's like okay mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, see, here I do not have money, and I can't use US like any fiat. I would not recommend doing it. If you do crypto because crypto is widely accepted and it's the same thing, I'll be able to purchase my tickets and pay for my relocation and whatever. Right. And he tricks her into sending whatever crypto she had, and she brought that crypto with everything that she had saved. Right. Yeah. Like, and the day he gets that crypto, he just disappears. He disappears, never to be seen, never to be found again. Now this lady comes and complains, and there's a whole investigation that yes. was going on about it. I don't even know. But mm. but you see, like it was very interesting. That is what mm. we were doing at Market Science. Mm. Uh, back to the journey. It was a Singapore-based company. We were trying to move our attention to U.S. markets. Mm. Interesting phase. The marketing was just being built. Uh, everything from like how your website to your messaging to the language that you are using to how the sales team is structured. to how the customer success is going to scale its operation all of it was being defined at that point in time and it was an interesting space to be in mm. uh but then covid hit me covid mm. hit me bad and i i was sort of like left on a in a bed rest like situation because i was like i developed this thing called costochondritis because of the coughing mm. and i was asked not to really move stay a lot in bed i was not really able to work So I think it was that, and my understanding that anyway at Merkel, because we were trying to answer these questions that how zero to one work, mm. it's not like Merkel had answers to them, right? Like you were still trying to figure out stuff with them. Mm. And I was like, okay, if I'm anyway doing marketing with Merkel, why not like do it on my own? Right. Plus that break that I had, I ended up meeting Apoor. Apoor was my co-founder. He's a batchmate. We were mm. very good friends, and I had no clue that he was also in the same spot. Mm. Not really. Uh, thinking of doing a job mm. and he was trying out with the side project so we start getting talking uh, we start we talk about a whole bunch of things like crypto is not the only thing we talked about there were a whole bunch of web2 mm. ideas as well but we had time in our hands was like okay the, in the worst case we have like 18 20 months of a runway let's see whatever mm. happens right like and we we give it whatever we had uh, we start talking to people everyone who had crypto web3 nft metaverse defi whatever written on their Mm. Twitter bio, LinkedIn bio. We start pinging them, asking them, "Why are you building? Even what you're building?" Mm. I remember I met folks back then. Terra was a thing, and uh, there was someone who was building MetaMask on Terra. And I was mm. like, "Okay, why are you even doing it? Like, what what do you see is the long term mm. play?" And there were like these things which I was convinced by, these things which I was not convinced by. But essentially, that told us that okay, there are these seven eight verticals. Maybe all of them will survive in the long run, and there will mm. be billion dollar businesses coming out of them. But for us, it was always because I had always done SaaS. Apoor had always done SaaS and mm. AI and ML. We were like, okay, what is the best way for me to do SaaS? Because I could build a dating app, but I don't know how to distribute one. Right. Right. Like, so how do you do SaaS? Something which is under the hood, and at the same time, something which is maybe going to be more and more relevant with time. Right. And out of the three hundred, four hundred people we talked to, I think almost eighty percent of them said that they wanted to go a community first route. Mm. Community first round of building a business. Community first round of building, like whether they call it a DAO or not, doesn't matter. Mm. But they're gonna go community first. Like today, I also don't know if we're gonna call DAOs DAOs in four mm. years. But from 2018, where I had dismissed DAOs, saying back then the narrative was that let's replace governments, mm. right? Like, and it's it's not how it works. Like, it's right. it's too ambitious of a target to start with. To coming to this spot where we are like, hey, you know what you're saying. you will probably uh not replace governments now there are being serious efforts being made on making stuff work a community of people can come together and collaborate there are tools that are being built there is infrastructure mm. being developed and if everyone in the world who is building in web3 is going to go on a community first route right maybe we are on to something which is going to be relevant so again the core thesis is i have always like sort of ended up doing things which i feel will minimize my regret in life right like so if i have this hunch that i don't build for daos and daos become a thing i'm going to regret it yeah. i'm going to go on and give it everything that i have got and we are here so uh that's like a very long and an elaborate story but i think that's also the most in depth i've gone on any show so yeah, yeah. so i can i can relate with your story because i also had a similar mindset i have always been a uh, Explore like you. I always uh, explore a lot of things in my career. So like I explored hacking uh, back in two thousand ten. So I started as a hacker, and then I found crypto back in two thousand sixteen. So I I've been involved in crypto blockchain in my full capacity since then. I went to DAO last year. I went to NFT metaverse last year. So I can relate to that. And uh, it is uh, and I uh, like your last point uh, when you mentioned that I will regret it. 
so i also had the same mindset because i i keep on trying new things and i always had the same mindset that if i am not doing something else will do it and i completely uh, like your points about everything you mentioned amazing story man sir amazing story and uh, about dao i think uh, last year we saw a rise in daos uh, mostly after the rise in nft community projects uh, before that uh, like we had we used to have maker dao we have we had a couple of dao but mostly this dao were uh, had you know limited participants not not a you know not um, not much popular and not many people were participating in that dao you know so last year after the rise of uh, after the rise of nft i think uh, we saw a massive rise of uh, uh, discussion around dao and uh, uh, even like uh, if i talk about the my example of uh, 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 investment dao which i am running right now I, uh, which name is ibc dao so we are investing in nft metaverse uh, projects uh, using the community owned fund which we have but uh, we have been facing this problem of you know using different tools to uh, do different operation within dao right for governance we need to use i i, I believe a lot of daos are facing this particular issue right now i think uh, like you need to use a uh, snapshot for governance then you need to use uh, discord for community management then uh, then you need to use a mirror for blogging crowd funding lot of different tools for different purpose so i would like to know how dao lens is providing this uh, one stop solution to you know uh, provide all the operations within a one single window where the time can be saved for dao at the same time efficiency can free, can be increased for them because uh, daos are not that much efficient as of now what i can uh, tell you from my personal experience of running in dao so how you are solving these issues yeah absolutely daos are not at all efficient let me let me put that straight right like yeah. uh, maybe out of all the daos that exist in the world 100 of them know and they have reasons enough to survive in the long run but rest everything is still in that stage where it's trying to figure out whether yeah. it will become relevant or not again the thing that needs to be appreciated here is that a community can come together and make stuff happen for the first time and there is a financially viable way of doing that Mm-hmm. there have been open source movements in the past they have always been popular but they have and like gone nowhere right like uh, even before internet people with common interests on forums like reddit if you go look at craigslist if you go look at pre internet era even back in 1970s when a whole bunch of music enthusiasts they started talking mm-hmm. to each other daos were still a thing right yeah. like like they were not being called daos they were not decentralized but like the communities were still a thing like like yeah even you, even uh, i will take you one example sorry to interrupt like uh, uh in a housing society right cooperative society where we are have in metro cities these are daos right people form a uh, sort yeah. of uh, fun together yeah. they can they work on the purpose everyone have a different purpose lions club and different clubs are out there all are these are purpose driven draw in my basic the basic understanding what are your thoughts on that yeah no absolutely see the only difference is that there is still a president or a secretary in that club yeah. and they have like slightly a higher power yeah but yes you are right like uh, people with common interests they will always hang out together mm. and if there is a way of making money while doing it like mm. why not right yeah. like it it has a lot of benefits but again coming back to your core question right like mm. the number of tools in daos it is so bad right like uh, so see this is what dowlens does let me tell you what we do first mm. uh we do two things primarily the mm. long term vision has a whole bunch of things and i could talk about that mm. but today we do two things primarily so imagine the way you walk into a company and there's an hr mm. that hr usually comes and tells you where where you're supposed to sit where the cafeteria is what where your laptop is who you're supposed to ping um uh, who who you can maybe think of giving uh let's say inputs in the form of right like you you talk to your product managers how and when you can contribute what is the road map like there is everything crafted for you in fact where is the elevator where is the cab where you are staying everything is taken care of mm. in a daos you enter this world and you are asked to click on an emoji to unlock access to the server now the problem yeah. is no one really tells me what that is like if i'm a beginner i'm done on that very yeah, thing yeah. most of the people like if you go in and analyze the number of people who come to start here channels in discord and the number that proceed through it like there is a big bottleneck there that's true that's anyway true. it's it's not really that complicated it's just that people don't want to read if you anyway wanted to read no one reacts on one emoji like there's a mm. jumping monkey there is a banana there is a <laughs> yeah, yeah, many emojis yeah <laughs> everyone clicks on all of them yeah, it's yeah. a human tendency you are like oh yeah. this 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 right like and then there is suddenly like it's like oh i'm getting access to so many things let's click on everything right like right. now that is a mess Right. because you are supposed to do what scroll through all of these channels 
So we were thinking that okay, how how does an HR do it? An mm. HR talks to your manager, an HR mm. talks to the marketing department, an HR talks to the product manager to come and say that okay, these are the sessions that you need to do. Mm. This data, the HR is collecting manually by talking to people. So essentially, we wanted to build a tool that would go in and talk to the stack of tools that you have in your DAO. Which mm. means, if there is a Gnosis safe that is being used, can we go talk to Gnosis safe and identify the data that is lying mm. there, which is relevant for the relevant for the DAO, like someone who's a beginner. Mm -hmm. Can I go and then talk to someone about what are the compensation they're expecting? Can I tell them where are the gigs? Can I tell them what are the recent proposals that have been voted upon? Right. Which unless done the right way, you will most likely lose that contributor because they're just going to be lost in a whole mess of stuff, right? right? Like, so that is the first thing which we wanted to fix. Now we wanted it to do it in a SaaS route. And the problem is that these admins, they're not very tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So you have to build a no code solution for it go as close as possible to Google slide. And that is how the tool works today. You click on a plus button. There are a bunch of templates that pop up. Those templates pop up based on the integrations that have been put in place. Mm -hmm. And it's like ready to go for you. It's it's already uh, like linked to your proposals, your snapshot, your whatever. Okay. And things are ready for you to consume. So you can analyze it or put it in whatever way. Now from an admin and see, this is great from a contributor's perspective. Admin's problem is still not done. Mm. They need to know who walked in into the server, how we should give access to them. Like mm -hmm. essentially, if you don't go in and do the emoji jumping monkey thingy, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? How would you give access to people, right? Like, so a designer should have a very different flow than maybe a developer. Mm -hmm. uh, the task that a designer should see also may be very different. The compensation they will have very different. Maybe the mm -hmm. kind of channels they should be a part of are very different. Right. And then who, who are these people? Where are they coming from? Why are they coming and not really showing up on community calls? Mm -hmm. There are DAOs with 15,000 members out of which 70, 80 show up on community calls. Right. Where are the rest? Right. Like, so that is the first thing which we go in and tackle, mm -hmm. right? Like we make it easy for admins to manage all of these questions that I just talked about. Now, there are some long-term questions of who exactly becomes a good contributor. Hmm. If Vikram walked into a server, is Vikram really contributing in the long run? Is Vikram going to develop an on-chain profile? What are those steps? So hmm. ideally, we also want to reach that stage where based on all of the data and AI, we can go in and say that, hey, you know what? Step two should be about culture. Step three should be about previous proposals. Unless you do it this way, you're hmm. going to see a 70% drop off. Right. Right. Like So we want to reach that stage. That is the first thing. Now, once someone is in, right? Like there's still a lot of friction. Because this is how it works. You mostly discuss on Discord. Then you go to a platform like Discourse. There's a bunch of backroom dealing that happens here in between. Like there are Zoom calls. People are like, oh, we should write this. This is the proposal. This is how we should term it. Then after Discourse, let's say there's a strong signaling. Everyone who is a part of that, they will come together and draft a proposal. This proposal mm -hmm. is going to go on snapshot. Mm -hmm. If if you're talking about Ethereum and base DAOs based on mm -hmm. ERCs and so on. Now, out of the proposal that is on snapshot if there is an approval or if the proposal goes through you break it down into tasks and gigs and bounties right right now the tasks and gigs and bounties they need to be claimed by people so someone will come find it discover it then they finish the job then there is an approval that happens because are the tasks even accepted so there may be a second round of voting or maybe there is a core committee that is manually deciding on whether the task is good or not mm -hmm. and then there is payout all of this happened over seven eight tools mm -hmm. right like now the problem is no contributors working for just one DAO. They will not because by design, you are supposed to work for three or four DAOs. It's, right. it's the beauty of it. Mm. Now, are you supposed to jump between like eight tools for three DAOs, which is like 20, 24 places mm. to make sense of stuff? And we were like, what is that unified view looking for a contributor where you can discover which DAO should I join? Who mm. should I collaborate with? What are the proposals that concern me? What are the proposals that do not concern me? Mm. Right? Like what are the avenues for me to make earn, earn money? Mm -hmm. And then the biggest problem is that a task today, it's not interlinked to the original discussion in Discord or Discourse. Mm -hmm. So you see, there's a lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. Because if if you give me a task and I do the task based on the description that you gave me, there is a whole bunch of 20, 30, 40 people that commented in threads on what not to do, what to do. And mm -hmm. maybe those are also things that I need to know. Now, this standalone task is great, but it may not be enough for me to get through. Mm. So there's a lot of back and forth happening there as well. So we wanted to fix that as well. Mm. And that is how stuff has happened over the past few, whatever number of months, years, the DAOs have been into existence. But we were like, okay, let's let's get rid of this. Let's link the task and the bounty board together. Let's mm. ensure that no one has to really go out of the platform because why should you go out to Snapshot if I can like provide you a deep integration? Your voting can happen here. 
right like mm-hmm. and then you ensure that that vote is also available on snapshot if someone wants to go there and do it but they should ideally not have to move out link their wallet so that the payment is all automated and then keep doing it at the scale where tomorrow if someone is drafting a proposal i build something like grammarly and i help you draft that proposal mm-hmm. if you are getting paid in a token called whatever take again alpha for example mm-hmm. we're like hey alpha can like go down 80% tomorrow let's hedge your risk by redistributing it across a bunch of stables mm-hmm. so it could be a whole bunch of things like people don't know if they should be distributing their dows into pods right mm-hmm. should i be having one pod should i be having 10 pods and that is one thing which we again like come and say that okay can we create playbooks for you to take care of your operations and stuff mm-hmm. on that front so a whole bunch of stuff like this is where dowlins is coming into today we take care of onboarding and contribution in the long run ideally there are four pillars you discover you onboard you contribute and you ensure that your operations are seamless and there are maybe like 20 30 tools individually that you could build in all of them the only thing is we are very particular about keeping an infrastructure angle what that means is that people can build on top of you tomorrow okay. right like uh, people can use the building blocks you have uh, to define what they want to do with it further after mm-hmm. uh, like whatever you have provided and that is brilliant because then then the community starts thriving so let's say you come up with a flow for your dao mm. which is very interesting and you come and say that hey i want to put this in the marketplace that dao lens has mm. then someone else can come and use that step because they find that whatever you did was pretty interesting mm. and then you get paid out of it because you created that block i also get some part of it like everyone the, the third person who took it also get some part of it and then everyone wins right, right? like so that sort of a flow that is amazing man so the dashboard is ready right dashboard is live the dao the dashboard, dashboard is live yes yeah. okay but discovery yes, part and live. the other part uh, it is in in the road map no uh, the discovery to some extent it happens already but okay uh, the way we would want to do it is also like include things like include the reviews of the members who have worked at the dao uh, and we we maybe we will integrate with someone who's already done it nicely but okay. the idea is can you really go and integrate wherever you don't want to get into unnecessary battles or where it just doesn't make sense for us to rebuild what someone else has already built it so yes. we're just fiddling around with those uh, options there but in the long run the idea is that as it starts contributing can i like start talking to someone who's also has your on chain profile so can mm-hmm. i give you certain roles and responsibilities based on the questions you answered mm-hmm. uh, for example let's say you you come and say you are a mathematician great Mm-hmm. but then i also see you are engaging with everything that has to do with governance right yeah. like on proposals you are active because i know your wallet id so i can go on and add a metadata saying that you know what like this person says that he is good at math but he is also good at governance right and then that is a brilliant insight for me because then i can include you in projects that are of super relevance as far as governance goes and so on so yeah there's a there's a major problem actually i have faced this issues like whenever you want to hire any contributor any person from your community member who have shown interest in any uh, job you have or any uh, gig you have then it is very hard to find whether the person is relevant or not right because anyone can uh, boast about his achievement anyone can you know fake whatever he can do but uh, it is not uh, we don't have a reliable data in that front and uh, so uh, if uh, someone can uh, uh, you know nail that part in the future that uh, you can hire you can uh, actually rely on this uh, community members who wanted to contribute in, in some of the task which you already have in your dao then it can be game changer in my opinion yeah absolutely yeah and also uh, about dao uh, i have seen one pattern there, there was one report also recently that uh, dao voting uh, governance is sort of not uh, that was distributed a uh, lot of people with uh, more voting rights they are uh, controlling the dao they are controlling the direction of the dao it is the case of almost every major dao even with the minor daos as well so it is sort of 80 to 90% you know more than 70 to 80% control is in hand of couple of wallets actually so how do you see, see uh, this will change in the oh, future yeah, absolutely. is it bad or is it good i think it is uh, for my personal view it is not good for the ecosystem uh, what are your views on that no absolutely see so uh, what's happening today is that <sighs> it's all token based mm. right um, and if you are contributing more mm. you will end up getting more tokens mm. and then you will end up getting more power so first so call you need to like take away that power as well if i am not adding value what that yeah. means is like have a burning schedule 
or somewhere where my money doesn't go away but my voting power unless it's being exercised it's of no use right like so people sitting on these that's the first thing the second is there is this models like kev which is knowledge extractable voting uh mm. it aligns with if there's someone who's an expert vikram can delegate their vote to that expert right like those things are very important because again yeah. not everyone is capable of doing things the third thing is we have been seeing is that for now why things are being defined it's still the most popular route seems to be at the end of the day having a centralized setup for some core work mm-hmm. and then having a community first route for the some other work right like and which which that what that essentially means is that there is limited governance yeah you can govern only few things as a community mm-hmm. but then there are certain things where you can't really entrust the community because today like the number of contributors are very low if you mm-hmm. go all decentralized and you float a task and no one comes and claims it mm-hmm. what's going to happen like is should the community die down because no one did it or should you yeah. figure out a way of like surviving come what may and then as things mature you again start decentralizing completely hmm. so there are these interesting things like even stuff like whatever i told kev right like you there are these things that okay can vikram not have 10 boards hmm. and what that means is that can vikram not really create 10 wallets using 10 email ids and then pose as 10 different people though hmm. at the end of the day vikram is just one person mm-hmm. so like proof of humanity which sort of like goes and says that hey you are just one person at yeah. the end of the day not really 10% right like and i just met the worldcoin team yesterday they are trying to create this wallet they scan you through a warp yeah by the way they, they say they have seven, yeah yeah they have 700000 people already on the platform which is great because that's like a very high number compared to the number of unique metamask addresses that exist mm-hmm. and essentially what they are trying to do is like one person should have one vote or like one person should have 10 vote but it should all be maybe from the same wallet mm-hmm. you shouldn't be having 10 different wallet right like mm-hmm. so so that is one thing and then there are these discussions of okay can you really like add poets to people's profile based on the contributions they are doing and like unlock yeah. some specific access right. based on that i think it's going to be all a mix of that for yeah. sure like see now there are problems with limited governance as well mm-hmm. that centralized plus decentralized setup for example if the decentralized setup is only limited in terms of its scope it's also easy to like scam or it's also easy to like maneuver because there's of course that not 100% of the focus is on a decentralized community mm-hmm. so if there's something done, being done for public good and someone was with ill intent was to come in and they would like flip the decision so for something which has to do with social good maybe it is a better idea to have 100% decentralization mm-hmm. for something like investment decentralized communities have worked brilliantly there are benefits right like for example with a dao there are contributor benefits there are business benefits like you have a distribution on day one you have you are building with the user who is also a buyer mm. right like and who is also a builder it's like there are these benefits that come in but of course it needs to be all navigated properly so i think we are just in that phase where a whole bunch of experiments will keep happening for the next 2 3 4 years before we see something tangible mm-hmm. and again i think that's great like all of the problems that we face like what i would definitely want to say is see there are these experiments that are being conducted around and a lot of these experiments fail mm. but for some reason there are people who come and say oh my god this crypto project just failed right like this crypto project again failed that is not true like 99% of the startups also fail no one yeah. is going and saying oh my god the startups also failed right like so it's just easy to blame crypto and then paint it as the villain yeah yeah but at the end of the day it's 7 years into its infancy we'll like in the long run it's going to go into a whole lot of stuff like there will be innovation there will be some reliability maybe there will be not 100% decentralization we'll see what time has to tell uh, yeah. but these are human experiments can't really be rushed through uh, you will have to fail before you really hit the right spot so yeah they are always a different phases uh, in any emerging technology so like crypto maybe like early it is sort of uh, at growth phase but dao nft these are very early right now right we are at innovation phase so i think dao nft will take a lot of time from here i think uh, many things will be uh, what we are seeing today a lot of concept will be changed in next 5 to 6 years especially in terms of nft and daos because daos are very early man daos in if you talk about india people don't don't, don't have any clue about dao and even not many people know how this dao work <laughs> so uh so how do you uh, tell any, any layman if you want to uh, tell him the definition of dao how you will uh, describe him what is dao like in the basic oh, very simple words? very simple see it's a it's a group of people with a shared bank account yeah there's no boss everyone can float everything yeah 
Yeah. And usually the people agree because you would float something which is like a proposal. So I'll go in and say, "Hey, let's do this." And I have to be convincing enough so that majority of the community agrees. Right. Now, that's pretty much what defines a DAO. There's only one thing that you will see whenever you are going and reading about DAO online. Mm. There's this thing called smart contract. Yeah. Right. Now, the smart contract is simply a few lines of codes which a few lines of code where and you can go in and ingrain conditions. What that mean is let's say your mom comes and says hey you know what if you go study for 3 hours mm. uh i'm going to give you a big candy great now 3 hours have passed by you have been a very good boy or a very good girl and you you did your studies and now you come to the mom and say mom i need my candy and then she's like you know what sweetie it's it's late night uh right. if you take it now it is going to like harm your teeth mommy promises you she'll give it to you tomorrow morning right like now this thing that she did she just manipulated you right because she and maybe she did it for the good reasons like mm. but but you understand like i can promise you a promotion if you hit certain milestones and never really do it citing that oh my god the economy is going down let's let's be observant let's not splurge mm. right now and so on but essentially that is not going to happen in a dao because this is ingrained in a condition so if mom said that you will get a candy if you go to study mm. the computer is going to understand that okay you studied for 3 hours and the candy is going to come your way come what may Right. Like no one can stop it unless the whole community, fifty-one percent or more of the people, decide that mm. you have to stop and change the smart contract. So mm. that's how uh, DAOs work. Like it's a group of people, a shared bank account, a way for everyone to float a proposal and vote. And uh, there may be a smart contract involved, may not be a smart contract involved. Broadly, this is how DAOs work, right? Like it's it's like a cooperative society for folks yeah, from yeah. India. uh you you have the examples of amul and so on which of course they have they still have leaders but mm. they have been there for a while so yeah i can closely relate to this housing cooperating society like I, I, even like i i live in one of them so i can relate the kind of work they do they also post these proposals and they do these meetings where you need to join and all and it is more structured in some manner but dao uh, in dao you know management part is not that much structure right only couple of people are holding this position and there there is no uh, people are saying that they are doing this election and everything democratic election but not many daos are uh, into that direction but i think um, more dao can do these uh, democratic elections they can they need to elect some people who can represent the dao uh, delegate and all right like it it, could, it should be changed almost every year maybe like 3 to 4 years terms and everything so uh, it yeah. is going to be amazing i think uh, we'll see a lot of different changes in the near future in terms of how uh, the direction will be headed for daos that's amazing so uh, one final question before we end this so how do you see the future of daos in next 10 years Oh yeah absolutely so i think see the idea is that a group of people will make stuff happen but i don't think that daos in the current format have matured enough in terms of like so there is not enough infrastructure most of the tools are not on chain right like things like sign in via google still exist there's nothing like sign in via metamask mm. vikram still has to prove who vikram is in an interview mm. right like his on chain reputation is not enough to do things and there are certain tools that do not talk on chain there are certain tools that do not talk off chain it's it's like infancy for now and there's very uh limited clarity in what is working what is not working we are talking about human problems here so in my view every centralized company in the world will ultimately end up moving to a decentralized first route okay. because there are benefits to it it creates a business moat it's going to be painful if you are the ceo because you are letting go of a lot of control Mm. and maybe the right answer is not to decentralize on day 1 it's to start with a small project and then gradually decentralize right. but i think the way things are working contributors have so many benefits like i could work on my own terms i could take a leave on monday i could join a project only if they are going to pay me 100000 dollars like it's all about proposals and how good right. are you at convincing people right like so i could work for five things like imagine i have done maths all my life and suddenly i want to do music in a tr- tr- centralized company they're going to ask me vikram where is your resume but your resume doesn't qualify like and in daos that doesn't matter in daos right. all you're supposed to do is go do it if the work is good enough and if the community agrees you will still get paid for it yeah, which yeah. is brilliant yes. so i have like i think with this it's very close to how as human beings we think and more and more contributors like today there are problems right like you crypto is still in your face like it's still the technology is still not well understood 
what is an nft half of the definitions are wrong people right. people have their own interpretations no one like if you go in and ask someone hey can you go buy a bread like if you ask me vikram can you go buy a bread using your bitcoin mm-hmm. i'm going to have to scratch my head and like do a little bit of research here and there right like okay. but but i can still do it and some beginner was to do it it's not going to be easy for them so as these things ramp up more and more people will get onboarded into the ecosystem then you will realize that there is a taste of freedom and no one would really want to work for centralized companies i hope it moves that way because uh, of course there are hiccups right now which is why i'm giving it a time span of 10 15 years but as in 10 15 years these things streamline mm-hmm. when there are no contributors left companies will have no choice right like suddenly you see in one year people who never thought they would work out of office are all working from home right and the norm has become that oh i'll work for a remote first company mm. it, it's similarly the day like you don't know whether it would happen over a pandemic i hope there's no other pandemic in life but whether it would happen over a pandemic whether it would happen over a event whether it would happen over a decade uh you may see people working that okay i'm going to just work for five companies like for four hours every day um like chill after working 20 mm-hmm. hours in a week and i will earn on my own the days i need to earn more i'm going to do take on more gigs or maybe i'm just going to vacation it's it's yeah. up to me i may sit, sit on a beach in portugal and sit on a mm-hmm. very cool cocktail or a mocktail and like keep doing whatever i'm doing which i never thought i would so it's really all about that you people are coordinating with each other without having known each other which is brilliant like it amazes right. me still till date uh and i think the future is going to be more and more centralized companies moving towards daos the day that starts happening everything around infrastructure will also pop up which is why if you could enter the daos space today mm. it is a bet worth making like it's it could be the biggest thing that has happened like uh in fact the growth in the industry in the crypto industry is higher than the growth that the internet age saw Yeah, yeah right like it was around 30% when the internet was coming around it's around 40% today so that does not happened a lot in life in the last 100 years that has happened on two or three counts so that is true sure there is an economic downturn and like crypto prices are going and like there is dark web and drugs and people doing wrong things but then there's another side to it as well which you should probably explore and dive deeper into so that is my advice also to people mm-hmm. start doing it like you may fail so what try yeah, buying that bread using bitcoin and if mm-hmm. if you're not allowed by your government to at least you can try reading it like there are playgrounds where you don't necessarily have to buy crypto but you can like act like you bought crypto right like that is also a good way to experiment if you don't really want to burn your money but again unless you have a skin in the game like put 100 dollars aside and say i'll only use this 100 dollar to lose all of it and learn what crypto is about trust me you will probably become the smartest person in the next party Mm. if you have done that so it's it's more on the lines of that and yeah that's what i would say towards the end yeah totally man totally i totally agree with your point and there are that are great inputs man that are great inputs so it was amazing uh, talking with you man i was bit low on energy today because of my health Thanks for uh, giving me your time giving me your time and it was an amazing chat and would like to host you again maybe like in the near uh, time we'll uh, discuss some more topics and we'll uh, explore more Thanks man. Absolutely Hitesh. Pleasure chatting with you and thank you so much for the time and the patience like uh, we take care to shift quite a lot but it was a pleasure.